So today I'm flying my old Saima quadcopter, the first one that I bought, and I'm controlling it with my Piranha. I've installed the multi-protocol module into my transmitter and it works really well. It's a lot smoother than the original transmitter and of course it has all of the additional functions of the Tyrannus timers and, and such like. Let's go inside now and I'll show you how to set it up. Why do I need this multi-protocol module? It supports the four main chipsets used in many, many different uh, models. What that means is that we can bind and control many, many different models and not have to have a plethora of transmitters around and after a while you forget which transmitter went with which model, or at least I do. For an upcoming project, I've bought this spare part, which is the receiver module, including two servos um, out of a WL Toys model, so I can control that and bind it to the multi-protocol module. Let's move on now and I'll describe more about the module itself. The module has two main modes, a PPM mode and a serial mode. PPM really only used with transmitters that don't support OpenTX and you can select the protocol that you wish by this little dial on the back here. There's a, a list of the protocols supported but as it says here incomplete and expanding. One of the things is to download and install the latest firmware and I'll show you a little later how to do that. Suffice it to say it's compatible with pretty much any radio that has this type of, of bay, clearly the FR Sky, the Tyrannus that I use, and indeed it will even work with much older radios. This is my venerable X388JR, but it still has the module bay on the back, and I've used this successfully uh, with other other modules here. I guess I'm not allowed to uh, pronounce the name of this particular transmitter module. Moving on, for our use with OpenTX we want to set up in the in the serial mode. That's with the dial in the zero position. It's difficult to tell which end is which of this little switch. In fact it's easier to take this cover off and then you can see exactly I've marked the pointer position on the dial. Not that I need to change this because it's always going to be in zero for serial mode. It's also worthwhile checking the firmware of your transmitter. You need to install the multi-protocol version for it to work. We can take a look now on the internet at the GitHub page where you can find the firmware to download and we'll go through the procedure of updating it. Now you may have had some bad experiences when flashing things. In this case it's been made an awful lot easier. On GitHub there is a dedicated flash multi tool. Here is the page with the description of it and what it looks like. Go ahead and download that. When you open the window up you even get the option here to get the latest firmware. So we simply click on the link there. It will open the releases page. You'll have to scroll down to find the version that suits your configuration. For me, as I'm using OpenTX, we look down here until we see the correct file. For me this is going to be OpenTX, Aileron, Elevator, Throttle and Rudder configuration and inverted. This is the default setting for me. So let's go ahead and download that. With that file downloaded now we can browse for it. It gives us a description of the firmware version. If we're confident that everything is good in there we can now go ahead and flash it. All we need to do is to plug in the USB connection. Well, we could hear there that it was recognized by the system. It has automatically populated it as COM3. If you're in any doubt you can have a look in your device manager and you should see that described as the Maple serial on COM3. If we're happy with that we can go ahead and upload it.
successfully updated. As you can see, it's a straightforward and painless process. With that now updated, we can put the module into the transmitter and I'll show you how to set it up for various receivers. The transmitter setup is quite straightforward as well. Just go into the model setup, turn off the internal RF module, we won't be using that. For the external RF module, we select Multi. When you've upgraded your firmware for the Tyrannus, including the multi protocol part, it will then show the multi protocol option here. Next, you can select your model. Obviously, I was flying my Simar earlier on, and strangely, it's the standard. If we go into here, there's actually an X5C option, but that doesn't work for me. Mine's a, a, an older version, I believe. This is one of the things with the multi protocol firmwares. You'll have to do some experimentation and Googling, and maybe even take a model apart to find out what unit is inside it and which of these options are going to work. There's also a trial and error. Now I want to change the protocol to a different version. We enter here and scroll up through the different options. The beeping, is it trying to bind? In my case, I'm going to be using the receiver that cannot be named. In my case, it's a V2. With that done, we can now test the configuration. Turning the transmitter on, we can see there that it is now bound automatically. There's my Aeron control. Very simple once you know what the actual settings are going to be. Sometimes though it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. If you remember this little board that I mentioned, this is a WL Toys F949 module. Strangely though, set up as a WL Toys in the multi protocol, it doesn't work. It turns out for some bizarre reason that this is actually set up as a Fly Sky standard. If I now connect that up, go down to bind, see the light there is now flashing. Now that it's bound, it's gone solid, and there are the little servos moving. I discovered this by a Google search for the board name and just used the word protocol, and it informed me that it has to be set up as the Fly Sky. No idea why. Interesting though. Finally, it even has an option for my P38. What fun we're going to have now.